All right, Matrix Live, it's demo day at Matrix Towers. Uh, we've got uh, Rick is going to tell you all about Element Home, and then Bruno is going to talk about structured logging within hydrogen. Um, so, folks, take it away. So, Rick, are you uh, are you out there? I'm indeed. Hi, everyone. Um, okay, just to recap, and sorry to bore people already on the on the call, but to give a bit of background to Element Home. Element Home's the the new product from EMS. Uh, the aim here is to try and make it as simple as possible to get up and running with your very own EMS server, uh, or to migrate from a Matrix.org account to your own server from within the app. So I'm going to give a quick demo, uh, run through this really quickly. It's very unprepared, so highly likely to break. But we shall give it a go. Here we go. Um, so hopefully you should be able to see, and please shout if you don't, a standard element um, client here. So this is uh, a staging client, but it's pretty much the same as you would see on uh, slash app or slash dev for matrix.org. So as you can see, I'm just in a room here in a couple of other rooms, and I've got a very basic uh, client setup. A new thing that happens though, when you click on your, uh, your profile button here, you'll see that there is this wonderful upgrade element home button. So clicking on that, We'll see that we get this new pop-up explaining what an element home is and how to upgrade to it. So I'm going to get into building a host, and then I'll come back to a little bit of what's happening behind the scenes. So let's get started. Um, we get a pop-up here explaining that this is giving access to the setup wizard to um, access your existing account and to be able to migrate it into EMS and into the EMS platform. So we're just going to click through and continue with this and preparing setup with a slightly off-center spinner there. Um, I'm going to uh, choose a host name, so Moonlight Staging. Here we go. And we'll click through on this. And we can see that we can pick our plan. So I'm going to uh, choose the monthly plan. And with my house, is actually already populated here for one big house road in Beverly Hills. And I already have a credit card uh, set up in here. If we wanted to set up the credit card, uh, we could obviously just put in our details here. Just use some staging details, uh, some things in the future, and I'm going to save my credit card details. And hopefully, this should work. Uh, come on. I'm going to assume that that worked, and I'm going to submit payment uh, because something has, you know, the beauty of live demos. They uh, they always have to have a little bit of a little bit of magic to them. So right now, this is going away and building a home server behind the scenes. Uh, this should take a couple of minutes. Uh, whilst this is going on, we can minimize this and carry on typing in our room, saying hi to all of our old friends. Uh, so just whilst this is building, I'll explain a little bit more about what we did when we said to allow permissions to access our old account. So what happened there is we were using the uh, existing widget APIs, uh, slightly modified, to allow this setup wizard to be able to gain access to our, um, our old account, get our um, email address, and to be able to set up an uh, EMS account behind the scenes using those details. So we've set up an EMS account. Uh, we've created our host in there with very, very minimal config. As you saw, one of the aims here has been to really make the EMS host setup process as simple as possible, cutting out all of the config and just allowing us a very, very small number of steps to get set up. Um, the only kind of real drawbacks with this is that we've had to choose a lot of defaults for people. So there's no custom DNS. Um, but other than that, you can pretty much change uh, all of the options you'd get with a standard nickel host. This is just going to continue building for a minute or so longer. Um, whilst it's going, does anyone have any questions at this point? Can you choose the first part of the server name uh, before the ems.host yeah. somehow before? Launch, or, or is it calculated if not? Uh, so yeah, you choose your your subdomain. So you get um, in the example here, it had a hyphen staging, but just ignore that. But you can choose whatever host name you want. So you can have your your family name dot element dot io, and that is your home. That's your um, that's your kind of place to go to if you want to chat with your friends. Yeah. There are actually two domains. There's the element dot io one, which is where your client lives, and then there's EMS.host. So if you choose something like Moonlight as your subdomain, you would have moonlight.element.io as your client that you could go to, and moonlight.ems.host as your, your home server name and where your IDs would be created. Does that answer your question? 
Yeah, okay, sorry. I think I just missed the field uh, when you were doing the, the demo where you entered that I was uh, probably half zipping, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Uh, anyone else? Hopefully we're nearly there. Oh, actually, we're, we're through. So we, the host is now set up. So we can set a new password um, uh, on the new host. So, uh, There we go. In fact, oh, I need a capital letter. Sorry, one second. Okay, right. So we've set a new password for our new account on our new server. And uh, then we can choose at this point to copy our old account across. So we have the migrator built into this process. So we can copy across our old avatar um, and it will automatically join our new account to all of the rooms that our old account was in. So you can see we're in three rooms and the migrator will now and go and get your new account to join into all of those older rooms and set all the power levels and everything as well as it can. So you can see in the background there that my new account was invited and joined and that my old account has now been renamed to my Rick old account. And it's now joined all of the different rooms. At this point, we can share the home. So we've got up to five accounts included with uh, the price of this server. So we can email some of our friends or our family and say, hey, come and join me on, uh, on my new server, or you can do it later. We'll say, do it later. And that's it, we're ready to go. And we can now click on this link here and hopefully go and join straight in to the account that was already created for us. Uh, so the question here is, what email address did I use? Um, and I can find that out from back here, probably. One second. This. Uh, anyone remember how I get my email address from here? <laughs> um, you see it, Rick at element. Oh, thank you very much. Cheers. Okay. And if I type that correctly, which I probably didn't, uh, no, I didn't, one second. Then we should sign in on our new server. And there we are, we're in our new server and we are in all of, all of the rooms that our old server was in. Um, we have the same avatar, we have the same name, and we can continue chatting with our friends um, back on the old server uh, as we would have done before. Okay. Awesome. Congratulations, it's awesome. Cool, so Very hopefully cool. that's nice and smooth and yeah, there we go, we can see that it's come through and it's all worked. So there we go, all done. Any any more questions? I may have missed this, but um, how does it handle history visibility? Um, <laughs> good question. Um, so basically I have the visibility that uh, new people joining rooms would have. So it's dependent upon the settings for those rooms. So you could potentially lose access to your history then. Uh, yeah. So you, you have to keep hold of your old account, basically. Yeah, that, unfortunately, that's uh, that's one of the limitations at the moment. And if anyone has any super ideas on how we can improve that kind of history uh, porting or backfilling, that would be really, really super cool. Anyone else? Yeah, it looks quite nice. No, no question, but the, the visual looks quite nice. Yeah, fantastic work by um, Dean and Nad on, on making everything look super slick. It's looking really cool. Yeah, really nice. Um, yeah, really, really nice uh, flow. All right, Bruno. Yes. Are you there? Hello, everyone. I am. Um, I'd like to show you some uh, something I did on Hydrogen recently. Uh, since two weeks or so, I'm back on Hydrogen after a hiatus of a few months. And um, first thing I worked on was um, structured logging and, and tracing uh, in the app. So uh, when somebody hits a problem in the app, um, I don't have to ask them to dig into the, the developer tools anymore. I can just ask them to hit a little button uh, with a lot that gives you a log file, and then they can send that file to me. And um, then I can open it in the tool, and it gives me great insight into what went on in the app while something was going wrong. So um, let me share my screen. Yes. Can you see my screen? Yep. 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 Cool. Right. So um, this is Hydrogen chugging along happily. And in the settings, now you'll see uh, debug logs. And you can hit export here now. This is the only 
part of the UI that, that changed really. So this gives me, this downloads a file. And then um, if I open the log viewer, which is included in the source code, but this would only be used by developers or um, I can see this file, I open it and um, I get this overview of everything that was happening in the app. Um, this will, if, if there's more than like- in One of your windows, Bruno. You can't see uh, the other tab? Nope. Unless no. you're frozen and um, it's just me. No, so probably not. The corroboree. Uh, yeah, same here. The tab then. Sorry about that. Right. So um, let me do that again. So now in this tool, I can open that file that I downloaded, and it will give me this list of everything that went on in the app. So uh, the oldest items are the most recent ones. And here I can see. Um, yeah, it's syncing constantly. Uh, I can dig down and what part of the sync took how long and if there's an error, uh, how it happened. So as an example of what um, what kind of bugs this allows uh, to be a bug, let me open a different file. So just before this call, I went out for a walk outside and I opened hydrogen and the catch-up sync took um, a bit longer than I felt it should take. So um, you can see here, um, I opened the app this morning um, and this basically uh, took eight hours, uh, this sync. Um, and that just means the app went into the background. So once it comes back from that, this means I open the app again. And here I see my sync, the catch up sync that took one minute and six seconds. Now that's a bit long. Let's have a look what took so long. Um, so here I can see the request actually only took the talking to the server and getting the new messages only took eight seconds, but I see this step and often you would correlate this with how the logging statements are organized in the code to make sense of it. But I've done this already. So I can tell you, uh, this is where the decryption of new room keys happens, uh, in this part. And, um, so here I can see there were, um, if I click here, I can see there's 50 child count so there's 50 new room keys that i received in the sync and actually um if i click on the one this means if you see the room key entry here that they were decrypted already so all the room keys were decrypted after roughly four seconds but still this took 54 seconds so where did the 50 other seconds went to uh, that make up the bulk of the time of this request and if i look at the code the only thing that would explain that is that um, retrying decryption for certain events um, after you receive a room key actually has a bug in it. And this is the bug we're hitting here. Um, so in certain situations, um, yeah, uh, retrying decryption for older events that you received previously can actually take uh, uh, like a heavy toll on storage and that makes it take a long time. So that's actually what went uh, on here. So. Um, I've, this was released uh, uh, earlier this week, and uh, I've already been able to identify like five issues that otherwise would have been quite painful with this. And I'm slowly going through this now. So now I'm focusing on making catch up sync faster um, and a few other end to end issues. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what that's about. It's a bit more geeky, but I hope um, solving all the bugs will provide user value for it. That's the demo. Any questions? Are there uh, any plan to ha to make hydrogen uh, able to send those logs through, for example, a rate check server? Yeah, um, yeah. I wanted to get it out as quickly as possible, but that would definitely be a logical next step. That you just can hit a submit button instead of sending files manually to me. Um, yep. Can the cool. format be used um, for other um, clients too? Can the what, sorry? The format, the interchange format um, for the spans. Yeah, yeah. It's just a, a, an array of uh, trees of JSON objects uh, where you have uh, key values and then some metadata like the tile. Um, so it's very agnostic to, yeah. Uh, uh, the, um, could it be consumed by Jaeger or open tracing stuff? I'm not familiar enough with uh, with with their format, um, but um, yeah, basically any tool that will allow you to show like a timeline, uh, this should be digestible by it, if possibly by doing some mangling on it. But yeah, 
all the timing information is there. Um, it's very yeah. cool. I can't wait for my hydrogen catch ups to be faster. Thanks, Bruce. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> all right. I think that's. I think that concludes uh, demos. Um, so I'll hand back. We now leave the uh, demo section. Hello, I'm Nathan Penny, aka KB1RD, from the Matrix Notepad project. The Matrix Notepad is a collaborative editor that uses the Matrix protocol to store and exchange edits in real time. The original version acted as a standalone Matrix client, as you can see here. It features a simple, bare-bones text editor that is shared between open clients. It uses a custom CRDT, conflict-free replicated data type, based on Lagoot to merge edits when they reach the client. The custom algorithm offers better detection of conflicting edits that may occur during a federation outage, though the code is disabled at the moment since it's not stable yet. The code for the notepad and the algorithm, known as Anchor Lagoot, is available under the GPL license on GitHub. Recently, I've experimented with running the notepad within a widget using proposed APIs to send and receive events. This would allow people to use the notepad from within their matrix client. Unlike existing collaborative widgets such as the Etherpad widget, the notepad communicates entirely over Matrix and requires no central server. If you're interested in this project or the algorithm behind it, you can check out the version hosted on GitHub pages, look through the code on GitHub, or come and talk in Matrix collaboration on matrix.org. Thanks for watching. That's your cue, Matthew. Oh, that's the mic you. Okay, everybody. Sorry for running for by 12 minutes. Uh, shall we go down the pub or well, yeah, whatever the COVID equivalent is? Have a great weekend. Bye. Have a great weekend, all. See you Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Next week.